So over the past five to six months, no matter what Intel laptop that I review, there's always at least three to four comments of people saying, no AMD, no buy, or no M1, no buy. I get it. The M1 and these AMD chips are absolutely amazing, but fanboying is dangerous. Not only does it cloud your judgment, it also makes you lose a lot of credibility because these companies are not your friends, they're corporations. They wanna sell you stuff. And when you get attached to them, you're gonna feel left behind when all of a sudden they're not producing the products that you once loved, okay? You're gonna get upset. So what I wanted to do today is create a balanced, fair guide on the perfect Ultrabook. We have two i7 Intel 11th gen laptops. We have a AMD IdeaPad Slim 7 with a 4800U and the M1 MacBook Pro. This is all about Ultrabooks. All of these laptops have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, before we begin, I have two things I wanna say. One, I just updated my channel membership. So if you wanna be part of the Moni's family, hit join. Number two, a lot of you are not subscribing to my videos and that breaks my heart. You know, think of the subscribe button as the opportunity to punch me in the face. Click on it and take a shot. So let's start off with build quality and expandability. And there was a time where Windows laptops were in a terrible place. They were just really poorly built, but that's changed over the past five years. Like you can find some really beautiful Windows laptops. In fact, that even rival the MacBook Pro in terms of build quality. Now I will say this though, the small things are still better on the MacBook. Like these edges, even though this is using CNC aluminum, just like the Razer Book, these edges are nice and smooth. Whereas on the Razer Book, they're a little bit sharp, and on the Yoga 9i, they're a lot sharper. Even simple things like screen flex and, and keyboard flex are, are much better on the MacBook Pro. The one thing that's kind of squared off is keyboards. You know, in fact, I actually find them to be better on some Windows laptops. Like this is a great keyboard. The fact they went back to scissor switches, but it's no longer the best. The, the, the clicky tactile keys you find on a ThinkPad are better. The Surface laptop or Surface Book rivals this. And if you want a numpad, you can't get that on a MacBook. You have to buy a Windows laptop instead. The touchpad on the other hand though, goes to the MacBook. Like this is still the gold standard of accuracy. I've never had a better experience on a touchpad than I have on a MacBook Pro. The only other touchpad that comes close or if not on the same level is the touchpad on the Surface laptop or Surface Book. Ports is another thing. Like if you value a lot of ports, you're only getting two USB Type-C ports on the MacBook Pro 13. These are technically Thunderbolt, but I don't find them to be true Thunderbolt because you can't hook up more than one monitor. It's just very limited in terms of the bandwidth that this thing provides. If you want lots of ports, you gotta go with Windows laptops. Like this thing has an HDMI, a Type-C, an audio jack, the list goes on. This, you're stuck buying dongles. So if that's something you don't wanna have to carry around with you, then a Windows laptop will provide you with more I.O. Then there's expandability. You know, you wanna upgrade this down the road? Forget about it. Everything is soldered on to the motherboard, the RAM and the storage drive. Windows laptops are starting to solder on all the RAM, at least on some of the more premium Ultrabooks, but the storage drive is still upgradable. And if you've checked out the pricing on each tier, to upgrade a drive on an Apple website, it's literally highway robbery. Like they charge a lot of money to go up from 512 to one terabyte. Whereas on a Windows laptop, you can buy like double the storage for the same price. Some of these Ultrabooks also come with two storage slots. So you can even have more than one. And finally, variety, you know, this is a traditional laptop. And if that's all you need, that's great. But if you're someone who wants a convertible or a two-in-one because they want to draw and sketch and touch the display, you can't get that on a MacBook. You got to go with an AMD laptop or an Intel one. Now, if you want to do this on the Mac side, you have to buy the MacBook Pro 13 and then go out and buy a separate iPad, which means you're going to be paying a lot more money than one of these devices that have a two-in-one type of experience. External sound has always been exceptional on the MacBook Pro 13. It's the laptop that I compare other Ultrabooks to when I'm doing a sound test. The Razer Book 13 has upward firing speakers, but they're very low and contain very little richness to it. Like they're, they're just not that great. The Slim 7 get a bit brighter, but they're still not the best front firing speakers I've listened to. The Yoga 9i on the other hand is different, you know? Like it has this 3D sound bar 
at the top and no matter which way you rotate the display, the sound bar faces you. Plus, you have bottom firing speakers to, to help increase the volume. Now, it's hard to hear over a microphone, but what you're gonna hear is the 9i get louder, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell the difference between the Pro 13 because the Pro 13 sounds a bit richer. Battery life is pretty good on most of these laptops, like the Razer Book 13 got the lowest score with eight and a half hours of battery life, which is still pretty good. And then in second place was the Lenovo Yoga 9i. I got 15 hours of use before needing to charge. The Slim 7, on the other hand, rocked 19 hours. And I think that's the highest PC Mark battery test I've ever done. Now, unfortunately, I can't do a PC Mark battery test on the MacBook Pro 13, but the one advantage that this thing has over all these other laptops is idle time. Like, when this thing is idling, I would only lose one to 3%. You know, I'd open this up days later and pretty much have the exact same battery life, whereas all these other laptops would drain a lot more. Software is personal preference. You either prefer Mac over Windows or vice versa. And I'm not gonna get too in depth in terms of features, but I will say this. When I buy a Mac, there is zero bloatware. With Windows, it's random. Some manufacturers install lots, others install very little. You can expect at least one Candy Crush game and a trial to some virus scanner. But the most important thing is performance, and that's where these laptops show their true colors. If we're talking about compile times, and if you're a developer, I found the MacBook Pro 13 and the AMD processor inside of the Slim 7 to offer the best results. These two processors with their eight cores were neck and neck, whereas the Intel laptops kind of lagged behind because they're still using only four cores and eight threads. As for creative work, I tested the Adobe Suite since I have access to it on PC and Mac, and the MacBook Pro 13 performed the best in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is quite impressive considering Premiere Pro has not been optimized for the M1 chip yet. It's beating out these laptops using Rosetta, their translation layer, which is impressive. AMD came in last, not because of the processor, because of the integrated GPU. The integrated GPU inside of these AMD laptops are not as good or on the same level as Intel's Iris Xe graphics chips. Now, in terms of Adobe Photoshop, the Intel laptops did the best. That's where the graphics acceleration really kicked in and the processing needing that extra iGPU performance. When it comes to Blender though, that's where AMD shines. Like pure pounding of the CPU, those eight cores being pushed to its full performance, that's where you see these AMD CPUs truly accelerate. Like this BMW example, the Lenovo Slim 7 was able to complete it in four minutes and 16 seconds compared to the MacBook Pro 13 that did it in five minutes and 30 seconds. Now, I really truly don't suggest buying any of these laptops for gaming as these are more productivity workhorses, but if you do want a game, the Intel laptop is going to give you the best experience. No matter which game I tested, the Intel laptop always came out on top. And if you're wondering why the Yoga 9i is beating out the Razer Book 13 is because of its aspect ratio. It's pushing slightly more pixels, therefore the frames per second are going to be slightly lower. At the end of the day, you're not buying a Mac to game on and, and you should not be buying an Ultrabook to game on either. But if you wanted to, these Intel integrated GPUs are powerful enough that you could play some games if you don't mind dropping the settings. The other thing to take in mind is external GPUs. If that's something you're super interested in, you're not gonna be able to do it with an AMD laptop or the MacBook Pro 13. I hooked up the Razer Book 13 to an external GPU and I was able to significantly improve the frames per second in the games I'm playing. Yes, I'm not utilizing the RX 6800 XT to its full potential, but if you buy a weaker GPU, you're still gonna get much better performance than any of these integrated GPUs. 
Heat and fan noise goes to the MacBook Pro 13. Like this thing is a champion in its own league. This ARM processor inside of here just doesn't require as much power. When this thing is under full load and the processors are being taxed, the hottest I'd see it get is 55 degrees Celsius for the CPU and about 63 degrees Celsius for the GPU. The AMD laptop, on the other hand, got up to 115 degrees and then had to power throttle down to about 90. You're getting great performance out of it, but you know, it was definitely getting a bit hot. The Intel laptops, on the other hand, are more conservative, so you'll see it get up to about 95 or 96 degrees Celsius, then it'll power throttle down. CPU temps will be about 60 to 70 degrees, but the clock speeds will be a lot lower, which means you're not getting as much performance as you would on the MacBook Pro or AMD laptop. Fan noise, again, MacBook Pro 13. It took 10 minutes for the fans to even come on. And when it did, it stayed well below 40 decibels, offering a very nice sound-free experience. These other laptops, after a few minutes, the fans are on, they get loud. Some of them almost as loud as a gaming laptop. And I feel like that's one advantage the MacBook Pro has completely conquered. And finally, the displays. And when it comes to actual bezel size and look, the Razorbook 13 takes the cake. Like these bezels are super thin, allowing the laptop to be a bit smaller than the MacBook Pro 13, even though they share the same display size. These are both 16 by 10 aspect ratios, and I prefer it over 16 by nine, as I feel like it offers a sweet spot between productivity and media consumption. Now you can buy Windows laptops with three by two or 16 by nine or 16 by 10, but with the MacBook Pro, you're stuck with 16 16 by 10. Quite frankly, I think that's okay, as most people prefer that extra 8 to 10 percent of vertical space over the traditional 16 by 9. In terms of color accuracy and screen brightness, a lot of these laptops are fairly close. They all get very bright, have good color gamut, but the one area that the Windows laptop excels over the MacBook Pro is the amount of displays you can have connected to it. Like this MacBook Pro, you're stuck with like one display plus the display on the MacBook and maybe the iPad if you use Sidecar. This Razer Book 13, you can hook it up to three or four displays. You can even hook it up to an 8K display. Like if you're that nerd who's like watching GME stocks all day and have like 10 monitors in front of you, you're gonna get a lot closer there with the Razer Book or Yoga 9 than you would with the AMD laptop or MacBook Pro. So hopefully this guide helps you pick the perfect Ultrabook. You know, AMD doesn't have a lot of premium Ultrabooks right now, but that's changing this year. So if you want like a more expensive AMD laptop, wait a few months, a lot are gonna be hitting the market. I think this is a great option if you're using Windows to develop. The CPU is just so powerful that it just crushes those compile times. If you're using the Adobe Suite and you're using Windows, then Intel makes more sense. It crushes Photoshop and Premiere Pro a bit better than AMD. And because it uses that Intel Quick Sync, you might get a better experience. You also have the expandability of Thunderbolt. So if you're hooking up tons of monitors, maybe use an external GPU or connecting devices that require more bandwidth, the Intel laptops are the only ones that are gonna do it super well. MacBook Pro, this thing is an absolute monster. This is the one you go for when you value raw performance. You're working with a lot of Apple apps like Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve. Even if you're a developer, it's a good choice because it's built on that Unix kernel. So compile times are gonna be a bit faster when it doesn't have to use Rosetta. At the end of the day, the last thing you should be doing is fanboying because I want all of these companies to survive because if they do, that means more competition and more competition is better for you. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section and down below, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.